Welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker, co-host Lori Hintz, and we have a guest, our esteemed guest already, segment one, Mayor of Bismarck, Steve Bakken. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, so I think you're the first guest we've ever had on segment one. Really? So. Yeah, so I don't know, something special about something you, special, I guess. I guess. <laughs> well, I was trying to think of how many times I had you on the radio back in the day, and yeah. now I get to be on your show. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, turnabout is fair play. It is. I won't treat you as nicely as you treated me. <laughs> well, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> okay, gauntlet thrown. All right, got right. it. Right. So you've got uh, a couple of topics that uh, sound very interesting. Uh, they're they're um, timely. And um, what are we? Hit them right off the bat. Yeah. Should we talk about what uh, the city is doing with the AARP? Okay. So city of Bismarck, um, we're having to redo our comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Um, as per Century Code, you have to keep up to date with that. Anything that has uh, a zoning authority, you have to have a comprehensive plan. So what we're doing in conjunction with that is going out to 2045. So it's together 2045 is the theme for the comprehensive plan. Um, part of that coincided with what our strategic plan was up to the comprehensive plan. And now AARP is doing a program that uh, focuses on age-friendly communities mm. and how to have connectivity for all ages within a community. And that's where we got involved and we're actually the um, first city in North Dakota to be part of that initiative. Does this have something to do with the fact that a former commissioner is at the AAR, was at the AARP? Is this a Josh Axtig thing maybe? It, it is Josh. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not directly related to him being mm -hmm. a former commissioner, uh, but there's a lot of great benefit with what the strategic plan was moving forward. So if we have an opportunity to um, play on that relationship mm -hmm. for the betterment of the city, then absolutely. We have a couple of graphics that we have here that we can show. Would you guys be happy to pull one up? There's one right there too. So talk about this. Uh, so last commission meeting, we uh, were presented with the um, declaration that we are part of the network. I believe there's 240 some cities across the country mm -hmm. that are part of this. Uh, and this is the presentation from AARP um, and former Commissioner Asvig uh, for um, uh, us being part of it. Hmm. Okay, now this slide shows little dots all over the place, but nothing in North Dakota. Nothing. It, well, the next time that they come up with the slide, then there will be. I see. So it these says, are, It ahead. says um, um, making places more livable for person of all ages. I see there's your graphic for the uh, Together 2045. So, so that's entirely separate from the AARP. It Correct. happens that they coincide yes. somewhat <laughs> for, for uh, making it more livable. Um, what, what do you mean? What does AARP mean when we talk about making it more livable? Well, so when you think of, of Bismarck and you think of AARP, um, the AARP piece is you think of uh, elderly or uh, further along aged parts of the community. Mm -hmm. um, what this initiative does is try to connect all ages. And that's one of our strategic plan points was all ages and all wages. So where this comes in and that connectivity part to make Bismarck the best livable community for everyone. Uh, being what type inclusive of things though? What are you thinking? What, what kind of initiatives and what type of things? Well, and that's what, one of the things we're going to vet. Um, I, I don't know if you have the graphic for it, but uh, one of the pieces of this is there's a mailer that went out. Uh, when people get that, please fill that out because it's very important to uh, fill in that community survey because this is what we start with when it comes to having those initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where we're going to connect the dots on what do the residents of Bismarck want? What do the taxpayers of Bismarck want for the community? Interesting. I'm trying I, to I, the, and so this is, uh, this is the, the, uh, an example of what was mailed out. It has already been mailed out? Yes. Okay. And uh, I see here that the surveys need to be completed by June 30th. So uh, you've got just about, uh, uh, what, 10 days or so left? Mm -hmm. And um, are you seeing some of them coming back in already? Or are you yep, not? Yep, we're already starting to get some of them back. I noticed that it's, uh, it's being sent to 5% of the, of the households. Now, my concern would be that that's fairly small, and you're going to need. Near, I mean, a huge percentage of those that you mailed out to be returned. 
to get a, a good handle on it? Um, or is it is it not so much that you're concerned about a the numbers as it is just hitting on what just people's ideas are? Just a random sampling. Just random, yeah. here are some good ideas and they're going to be representative. Is what yep, and then we can start vetting things from there. Interesting, Very interesting. Cool. Uh, another topic that Rick had talked about, can I switch you to bet, another yeah. All right, uh, the, another topic that he wanted to just touch on a little bit was the rec center, the Parks and Recreation Activity Center that is being pushed forward. Uh, can you give us an update on what, where that is at? Um, you know, that's Parks and Rec, that's the park district, so they haven't come to us with a, another, as a city, mm -hmm. uh, with another initiative yet. Uh, of course, uh, um, their uh, sales tax uh, plan failed. Right. Um, so they were recrafting what uh, what they were looking at doing. I have not seen what they're working on yet. Um, if that's been pared down, if they've engaged more parts of the community uh, to find out what failed and where uh, people's had more interest. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't seen that yet. They haven't brought that to the commission table. Uh, I can imagine that they will in the very near future. So that is just in limbo probably. They're probably working on it at Parks and Rec. And yeah. Well, it'll be interesting if they do bring something to you, see what it is and how yeah. it uh, compares to what the original plan was. Um, back to your comprehensive plan, Together 2045. Uh, I noticed in the logo that we ha had up uh, just a bit ago, it shows playgrounds, uh, bus, I'm sure, representing transportation. There are some buildings that look like storefronts, so representing business, perhaps downtown, um, residential, and then people holding hands. So, and there, there it is. Um, you, are, you are going to be getting a lot of good ideas, I presume, from the citizens of Bismarck. Are there some things in particular that are part of 2045, say, for instance, uh, with transportation or, um, I, you know, with, with, are there any other things that you know, here's what a piece of our, this, this vision 2045 is going to be? Uh, transportation is probably going to be a big piece of it. Um, you know, the connectivity that we have within the city from the Parks District perspective and, and where we have that connectivity with the bike and hiking trails. Um, that's huge. I mean, everybody of all ages uses that. Um, when you take a look at the, what the community of Bismarck is, is we're a regional medical hub. Um, that plays a big piece of our economy moving forward. Um, so that's where I, I can imagine the transportation piece is going to come in with this and, and how you have that uh, connectivity opportunity to get to those facilities that uh, we have and are continuing to grow out in the city of Bismarck uh, with our medical partners. Um, and for me, one of the things that you saw on the graphic was uh, the waterfront. It, you know, the Missouri River is a big piece of this community. Uh, how we capitalize on that is paramount. I mean, you know, we're in the process of master planning what the waterfront could look like right now. Um, with that development, we're missing out on a tremendous amount of sales tax revenue coming into uh -huh. the community from a tourism perspective. Sure. Um, it's not just for those that are, of us that live here already, it's also a big piece of recruitment for employers and retention for employers. So as we get that waterfront piece built out, and if anybody's driven down River Road lately uh, and, mm -hmm. and seen what's going on with the riverboat landing and where that project is proceeding, um, that's kind of the linchpin of where everything's at because that's the example of how you develop on the waterfront. Um, it's vertical. They went up on piers and pilings. So that economic piece and how we develop that waterfront, and it's not a scattershot piece. Mm -hmm. It does have to be master planned. Um, to capitalize on the best use of that space for the community, you know, we potentially could be in a position to eliminate property taxes in Bismarck just off of sales tax revenue with what could come in off that tourism piece. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic uh, idea approach. When you say the waterfront, what what area are we speaking of? Now we know where the the riverboat is. Are you going extending how far south? North side of Pioneer Park to uh, right now the expressway, north of the expressway, so out behind Sertoma, uh, the Pioneer Park piece, um, that was, those were the constraints that I was really looking mm -hmm. at because that was the heart of Bismarck. Sure. Um, but in discussions with, uh, on the state level, uh, parks, for example, one of the big things that we want to create on the waterfront is accentuate the, the trail system. 
uh, so we can have an art and history walk and, and really focus yeah. on uh, the tribes and the community and the river and the railroad and all the pieces that went into, and the agriculture and all the pieces that went into building this community um, and accentuate that in that art and history walk. Um, in my discussions with state parks, uh, connecting that trail system all the way up to Double Ditch has some great advantages. And then connecting it all the way down to General Sibley um, and what's probably going to be another future state park on the south side of Bismarck uh, where MRCC currently resides. Uh, that is, that's a big piece. Uh, okay. Now we've got a, a large palette to grow. Right, right. absolutely. So All right. interesting stuff. Thank you, Mayor Bach. And we are going to be back uh, more from the Mayor of Bismarck on our next segment. Stick with us, folks. We'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. All right, we are back. It's No Apologies on Beck, and we have Mayor Steve Bakken, Bismarck, with us talking about a variety of things. Um, we were just talking during the break a little bit about the, the that boat landing, the Lewis and Clark area, The what's going to be, uh, it's interesting because it's not just a restaurant, it's going to be kind of a... a event center? A, yeah, a little bit of an event center. It's, yeah. it's kind of a, uh, a pivot point on the waterfront. Yeah, I was asking what's taking so long, because I live on the river and I drive by it all the time, and I'm like, this should have been up. <laughs> Guilty. So you yeah. tell our viewers what, what's, what's happening with that, if you would. So basically, um, that was the first conversation I had after getting elected with Aaron Barth um, to discuss what they were doing. And if you recall, they were putting it back in the same location that Meriwether's flooded. Sure. Um, and I needed them to be the example of how you develop on the waterfront. 
Um, and you do that by going vertical, either spherical piers or pilings. Um, so we had that high water summer, and they rethought their plan a little bit and said, yeah, you're probably right. Need to go a little more vertical. Right, but the other <laughs> factor in that is you also have to mitigate the core, when the core of engineers, when you're developing on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. So you take them out of the equation. The way you do that is you go vertical. You get out of the two feet above the high water mark that they claim, and once you're above that mark, then the only thing they care about is can water flow in, can water flow out. Yep. So there's not an obstruction or something to hold water at that point. Right. So once you do that, then you actually have a, a much easier time through the permitting process to develop on the waterfront. But that part of the reason time. that it, yeah, part of the reason that it wasn't, it's not finished by now is there were some extra costs involved with that, but anything worth doing is worth doing mm. correctly the well, first time. Yes, especially, especially on the river. On the river. Because <laughs> in the long term, it will save money. Yeah. Yes. Yep, exactly. Wow, interesting stuff. So let's talk a little bit about, um, we had a commissioner on who talked a little bit about this, transitioning away from specials. So the citizens of Bismarck are, are probably going to be very interested in this because uh, it's going to be, <clears throat> an interesting way to try to transition from one way to another way. You, you kind of have to chop and change it. You, there's no real yeah. easing into transitioning away from specials. Um, yeah, and, and um, the process was started before uh, I was elected, and it was a great idea, but through our home rule charter, we didn't have the opportunity to fully vet that because they got so far in the process and then had to stop because uh, a community in North Dakota wanted to implement their own gas tax. So the legislature threw a blanket over the ability to do that. Well, the unintended consequences of that were they also prohibited us from thinking outside the box with some of the things that we wanted to do. So we had to go through the legislative process, and it took two sessions wow. to be able to at least have the ability to get rid of special assessments. Um, the part with the legislative piece was there was a lot of confusion. Now, we were building something for Bismarck and what works best for the residents of Bismarck. Some other communities were trying to think how that they could build on that. Well, if you want our model when we're done, you can have it, but it's what we need and our taxpayers need for relief in Bismarck. If you want to do it in Fargo, then you're going to have to, you can build off of what we do, but you're going to have to do it yourself. Um, there were concerns on the banking side of things because, um, you know, that affects your escrow account. There were concerns uh, with Fargo. They were trying to figure out how to double dip on it. Can we do some sort of a hybrid? You can do what you want. For us, it's either or. Um, there is no way I would ever vote for taxing the residents of Bismarck twice. So for our case, it's either or. There will be special assessments or no special assessments, but that is gonna be something that goes, here's the plan when we get it fully worked out and fully vetted, here's the plan, is this the methodology you'd like to use? Now through the process, we have a lot of work to do. Getting the legislative piece fixed was just the beginning of the hard work because now we have to go through and figure out what's equitable for all residents in Bismarck. Interesting. And to flip it over will be that will be interesting too because you do you have to you just yeah. have to set a date and say okay from here forward. Yeah, and, and there may be some sort of a little grandfathering in and and some time pieces and how that affects development, um, but it, it's not for new development. It's for those in established neighborhoods and you know, for example, at my house, just like every other neighborhood, seven to eight years they have to come through and redo my street. Uh, at a cost of seven or eight thousand uh -huh. dollars. If I could budget for that, if I could do that through a utility fee, if I could not have that big hit on my escrow account so that I'm not worried about getting that rebate back from the bank or did they calculate that correctly in the first place, that alleviates my daily budgeting, my monthly budgeting as a household. Sure. sure. Yep. How about Bismarck's comp plan? What can you tell me about it? So basically the comp plan um, is provided that we have to uh, come up with one uh, as per century code. Mm -hmm. Any community that has the ability to um, have zoning authority has to have a comprehensive plan. That's in the century code. So Bismarck hasn't had ours updated for a while. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process of doing that. 
Um, with that update, we're also going to really rely on community partners on how that formulates. So, Give me a, a, an example of who are, you are talking about when you say community partners. Um, Burley County, Bismarck Public Schools, Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. um, Bismarck Mandan Chamber EDC, um, some of our uh, larger employers in the community, um, sampling of residents. Um, all of that is going to go into the comprehensive plan. Um, you know, ironically, the AARP um, program helps with that. That helps build out our comprehensive plan. So the timing on that is actually phenomenal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, another topic. Chickens. <laughs> Seriously, it's a topic. Well, There's a lot of yeah, people are curious about the people. Chickens. It's on people's minds. It, it, it is. And uh, <laughs> I know a lot of people who really want chickens. Don't you? I know a few. Do you want chickens? No. Although I'll take guinea hens because they eat wood ticks. Uh, so do hens. I mean, oh, okay. chickens eat wood ticks too. Um, but there's a lot of concerns, and mostly it's the cost. Um, any animal is considered personal property as per century code in the state of North Dakota. So when you're looking at how do you handle chickens or if a chicken gets out or a chicken that's a nuisance or something that goes to litigation and PD and animal control has to hold on to that animal, which means we have to provide space for that animal. Um, to do that costs money, you know, four, five, six thousand dollars to build a chicken coop at of taxpayers' expense right. at animal control because you can't pan up chickens if somebody's chickens are loose or somebody releases chickens because they were cute in the spring, but well, winter's coming and <laughs> I don't want to take care of them correctly. Um, and most of the people I've talked to that would like them are the responsible people that really would do a good job. It's the others that aren't those responsible people that I'm worried about. Um, how does PD deal with uh, nuisance complaints? They get a sizable number of complaints about barking dogs now. Sure, already. Um, I guarantee that if you stick a chicken coop next to my hunting dogs, I'm going to have the police called. Is that my fault or is that your fault? Um, if your fence fails and my dogs get out, um, is that my fault or your fault when my dogs kill your chickens? It's your fence and your fence failed. You know, there's so many things that we're not <laughs> looked at and vetted with this. Mm -hmm. um, and our planning department went through and did a great job of, of checking all the boxes and, and doing some diligence on it. But um, one of the things they left out was the ability of a, uh, an adjacent neighbor to protest out of that. Mm -hmm. And when you take a look around the state, there's a lot of communities that actually do allow chickens. Um, Dickinson, Fargo, uh, I believe Minot does. Um, there's a lot of communities that do. If you look at the permitting, most of those communities have one, maybe two. Fargo has 23 or 26, if I recall correctly. The difference was most of those communities, you have the ability to protest as an adjoining neighbor that, no, I don't want those next door. Fargo doesn't. Fargo's got a sizable number, bigger population, but a sizable number of people that have those permits. Um, that wasn't in there. Hmm. So, <laughs> well, we'll who be knew watching. there was so much? Yeah. We'll be following the chicken the saga. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Hopefully, it's, it's, it's done now. So. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We very Absolutely. much appreciate, Thanks, Thanks, Steve. appreciate it. Too. Folks, stick with us. I'm going to talk about Juneteenth. Not in favor. Am I a racist? When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. 
Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's, with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. All right, we are back. It's no apologies, and we are your place for some sanity <laughs> after hours. I try to say it that a was way. nice. Yeah, a little, I don't know. A little adjustment. All right, <clears throat> I'm your host Rick Becker, co-host Lori Hans. Blah blah blah. Here we go. We're going to talk about Juneteenth. It's um, only two days away. It's two days away, and uh, today, I believe, uh, our president signed into law Juneteenth as an official federal holiday. Yes. Um, and uh, I have up uh, from a couple days back um, a graphic for you, Juneteenth events near me, how to celebrate Emancipation Day. So there are, there are uh, activities going on all around the nation. Um, I was going to look up the different things you could do and uh, see if what there is in North Dakota. Um, frankly, I like they use the word portmanteau, you see there yes. on the first line, Juneteenth, which, which is a portmanteau for June and 19th. So That's I forgot about that word, word which we means combining, right. a word combined, uh, you know, combining two other words. Like Brangelina. So, <laughs> Brangelina, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Brangelina, right. So, but anyway, I want to talk about uh, Juneteenth just a little bit more. We've covered it on this program because we had it in the North Dakota legislature. And I was opposed to it. Right. Got up and spoke against it. Was called a racist, <laughs> and the, the here the, here's the reason why. So Juneteenth, for for those of you that don't know, Juneteenth is a holiday now which celebrates the end of slavery. What happened was after the Civil War, there was still some slavery going on in Texas uh, because you know the <laughs> word didn't get around very fast, and uh, there were some Union soldiers that went into Texas. Uh, they went into Galveston. They freed the slaves in Galveston and declared slavery was over on June 19th, 1865. Um, and so there's an interest to then celebrate the end of slavery. Now, because what has been happening for the last few years and this huge focus on race, racism, uh, reparations, whatever it might be, a huge, huge push from the social justice warriors, the far leftists, the Biden administration, et cetera, um, Black Lives Matter. There was a huge push to expand Juneteenth from just Texas and a few other states to be a federal holiday. Um, and there was this, this concerted effort to make it so that if you weren't on board with the idea of Juneteenth as a holiday, you were a racist. 
That's what that's what got in my crop. Yeah, that's a problem. Because that's fine. I'm happy to celebrate the end of slavery. I, I think it's I think frankly it's a great idea. Slavery uh, is a blight on American history. There's it's fine to celebrate it, but it's it's hard for me to say okay I'm going to celebrate Juneteenth no questions asked because you tell me that I must or you should or I'm a racist. Right. And here's, here's why, why do I have problems with it? Well, number one, because leftists are trying to shove it down my throat, and I generally have a problem no matter what, based on that alone. But Juneteenth, for one thing, it's a dumb word, okay? Maybe that's, maybe that's trivial. Let's move on. June 19th was when they freed the slaves in Texas in Galveston. Just that one place. Just one city. They right. freed slaves in other cities in Texas in subsequent days. When those slaves were freed in those select cities in Texas, there remained slaves in other states. In fact, when the Civil War was won, the Emancipation Proclamation, for instance, only applied to the southern states, to the Confederate states. Those states that did not fight the Union and had slavery, slavery was not over there. When Juneteenth happened, Delaware, Kentucky, and Maryland still had slavery. So you are telling me that I must celebrate this day that you've determined commemorates the end of slavery, even though it was not the end of slavery. And if I suggest that we should celebrate, for instance, December 6th, when the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery was ratified, or December 18th, when that same amendment actually became effective, I'm racist because I'm not going along with what you want. How maddening it is for you to say, we determine this, you must go along, do not say anything contrary to what we want or we deem you a racist, when I can point out to you, race, I mean, uh, uh, slavery still existed. Isn't, isn't it uh, uh, um, sort of unfortunate for those people that are the legacy of the people that were still in slavery after Juneteenth? I mean, it... It just point. blows me away. The other thing about it is I would like to know the, the actual literal background of who invented the name, the, what do you call it, a portnoy? A portmanteau. Portmanteau, that's it. Portmanteau. So you've got... No, it, it, so in like, Texas it's legitimate. I mean, for at least right. for an area. It was celebrated um, very shortly after 1865 mm -hmm. in, in that locale. In that area, and then it And spread. it makes sense for that locale, but for a or federal... Or did somebody hunt, just, you know... Co-opt well, it. It started spreading a little bit. It, mm -hmm. it started catching on somewhat, but it was primarily a leftist movement of pressure. If someone had said to me, hey, Great. what do you think about celebrating the end of slavery? Let's make it Freedom Day. Great. Let's make it Emancipation Day. And, Great. and Great. here's Great the reason why it's gonna be it's gonna be December when we have the 13th Amendment. I would say, I'm on board. Right. I think that's a hell of a lot better holiday than most of them that we have. Yep. I can I I am gonna support that. Um, but but they shoved Juneteenth, which is ridiculous. Um, and not only that, but before, um, and again, it was like six months later when slavery actually ended in December. But up until that time, there was a lot of slavery in a lot of the northern states. It was just informal. So there were people in bondage all over the place after your, your beloved June 19th. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but, and, you know, it goes along well with the revisionist history. If you want to revise history like that in 1619 Project and stuff like that, it dovetails beautifully with it. Right. It, it, it does. It, it just, you know, I just don't like that the, the narrative is set and you must not diverge from what is proclaimed to be acceptable. You know, it's the same thing when we had the question of refugees uh, in North Dakota when Bismarck, Burley, and the other uh, counties could determine. You know, I made a comment about, um, well, we should determine what the costs are and what the implications are uh, for the community to, to know what is a good number. Sure. Uh, it, could be, it could be 25, it could be 125, it could be 1,000 for all I know, but it's proper governance and due diligence to know what the numbers are before you just say yes. Well, again, that, boom, that's racism. You just have to accept, no questions allowed. So yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of Juneteenth. You know what, I might just have <laughs> A celebrate December 18th for the effective date of the 13th Amendment is too close to Christmas. I am going to celebrate Freedom Day on December 6th. Y'all can celebrate it with me. Juneteenth, I'm going to work. We'll That's all to I got to say. write that down so we don't forget to do it on 6th. the show. December 6th. Remember that too. So when we come back, we are going to introduce you to a new family member for Beck. And you'll see it when we come back.
We're the ladies of another view, bringing you a fresh view on local issues and different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. When you're buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with the Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call the Window Source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. If you don't know what's going on in education in this country, then you don't know what's going to happen in the future of this country. And it's important. I'm Dr. Duke. And I'm Katie. Watch the Dr. Duke Show weekdays at 4 p.m. Central Time on Beck TV. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's Hot Dogs, Calzones, and our delicious Jumbo Buffalo Wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. All right, we are back. It's No Apologies on Beck. And Lori, you've yes. got something to tell us. You said something about a family member Yeah, on well, I say family member when I talk about the Beck family of programming. So Beck TV has Ladies of Another View. They have, you know, No Apologies. And we have a new family member that I'm going to introduce uh, you to a little bit. Um, it is not like you probably haven't heard his name before. His name is Trent Luce, L-O-O-S. And Trent Luce has been on radio many, many, many times in this market before. So many, many people have heard of Trent Luce, and you may know him or have heard heard of him. He's kind of a nationwide phenomenon, if you will. He's based out of Nebraska. Uh, he has a website called loosetails.com if you want to learn a little bit more about him. L-O-O-S-T-A-L-E-S.com. And he says on his site, and I love this so much, dedicated to bridging the gap between rural and urban America. And I'd like to give you a sampling of things that you can expect in the future from Trent Luce. He's Trent on the Loose. Roll tape, please. Hey y'all, it's Trent on the loose from Golden Valley, Arizona, where it's a dry heat at 96 degrees. Robert Hall, we are here celebrating Liberty, great American pizza, yeah. and maybe a sub or two. Ours what in good. the world do you have going on? Uh, well, today I'm hosting... I'll hold this um, microphone, because yeah, you might run off, and I don't want I you to. I might, I might, yeah. T well, today you guys are here. CSPOA is here. The Arise Tour is here. I'm proud that you guys picked us to stop on the tour. That's very cool. And we're feeding everybody uh, uh, a bunch of great food. Just to clarify, I don't think we picked you. Did I think pick you picked, yeah. Right, I think I got a memo you. that said you were coming to Great American Pizza. Awesome. 
Well, we appreciate having you guys here. Looking forward uh, to talking about freedom. Well, first of all, let's talk about pizza. All right. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with what you have going on and the decor that you have inside the facility and the haircut that you have. Why do you have all that, Robert? <laughs> well, we're red, white, and blue, man. We're American all the way, and we're not ashamed of it. We love America. We love Americans, all, all Americans. We don't care what color you are, what, you know, where you're from. We just love Americans. We like to feed people. So it goes good. And red, white, and blue, you know, we're all American folks. So that's how we got it. But people seem to love it, man. We didn't know much about pizza. We just, this is our first time doing it. So <laughs> I'm glad y'all love it. I'm glad y'all love it. Like you never made else. a pizza before today? No. Well, you're pretty good at it. Yeah, that. yeah well, well, not today, but I mean, you know, yeah. it's our first time doing it. But uh, there's some sort of power in the pizza, man. There, it, it gathers people. And we need to just gather people, get our voices together, and that's what we're doing out here. And uh, we're just getting people together, loving on each other, showing each other how to get um, our country back together. We the people are the power. And if we get us all back together, we'll show the politicians that they work for us, we don't work for them. And so that's kind of my mission with pizza, is to, is to gather folks and get our voices back together instead of America being so divided in different directions, you know? Pizza seems to bring them together. Yeah, it's kind of like politics, honestly, pizza is, if you think about well, it. Well, it's more like politics when you name your favorite pizza the Second Amendment pizza. Well, that is our famous pizza, the Second <laughs> Amendment. But like like everybody loves it's the crust. fully loaded, right? Right, it's fully loaded, locked and loaded, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, concealed carry with jalapenos. Um, but pizza itself. Wait a did you just put jalapenos in me? Yeah, I oh did. Oh, my yeah, goodness. You didn't what's even know it. You what's going to happen now? <laughs> I don't know. You're on a bus, <laughs> not me. <laughs> But you know, you think about pizza. Most everybody likes the crust, right? Everybody likes the sauce. The cheese kind of keeps us together. 80% pepperoni, you know, and then after that it kind of changes. That's people in general, you know, and, and I try to relate some of the politics of today to pizza so that people just lighten up a little bit. Sit down, let's have some food, let's talk about our issues in today, you know, and all of us miss Trump. We love Trump. We talk a lot about that here. You know, I appreciate you guys being on this tour. It's awesome that you guys are here with us today. And uh, that's about it, you know? Back to something that I think I heard you say, 80% of the pizzas have pepperoni on them? Most of, 80% of the people, eight out of 10 really? want pepperoni on their pizza, believe it or not, yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? So, and then it goes sausage, 70%, you know, it gets past that, the vegetables, it starts changing. So it's all from the pig, so it's all good. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah most of it. So, Robert, we've had a trend developing, and it's mostly because I'm picking the spots, what Robert David Steele called the ground commander, whatever that means. Uh, I think it means he can delegate authority when he can, don't, doesn't want to answer a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as ground commander, I pick places like Golden Valley, Arizona, not Tucson or Phoenix, and we're showing a whole new set of people to the world that previously have not been discovered. And clearly I feel that right here in this valley. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people here never, you know, we get overlooked every time, unless it's for taxes. They tax the hell out of us, who knows where that goes. But I mean, other than that, we get looked over. Nobody really pays attention to Mojave County and it's a big county. It's I think the third largest or fourth largest in the country, something like that, it's big. And we are the reddest county in the country. We really are. If you look us up on the map, we're surrounded by pink and blue, you know, but I look at it like the biggest victories come from when you're surrounded, you know. So we, uh, we're here, man. We're patriots behind you guys. There's so many patriots in this area that uh, love our country. Um, a lot of our veterans here, two of the World War II guys that raised the flag on Iwo Jima lived in this valley. Really? Yeah. I mean, we got some really great people here. And it's unfortunate that it's kind of like drive through, but I always say we're in the middle of nowhere but we're on the way to somewhere kind of because we're you know you're on the some way to some someplace significant yeah, yeah. because i want to take that a step further yeah. you said we pay a lot of taxes in fact quote you said they tax the hell out of us wherever that goes right that's one of our objectives yeah is to find out where that goes yeah and help distribute where that goes right and use less of it less than what they actually need well the politicians they just take it they're all about big money you know, I mean, I just saw something in the paper yesterday about they get $41 million for COVID relief. I mean, and they're debating where that should go, you know. How about to the business y'all destroyed? You know, they've just absolutely ruined so many businesses around here, and I watched it happen. And when they came knocking on our door telling us how we're going to live our lives and do our business, we just said, no, we're not doing it. You know, and you don't have any right to tell me anything about what to do. You know, and, we, and all this money that we pay to these people, we... 
and then they turn around and use that against us. Or they, or let's look at it this way. They take our taxes, shake it up, give it back to us at $41 million and say, now we're going to put these people in charge of distributing this money that we took from you and tell us it's supposed to be a good deal. How did we ever get to that? We let it happen. Yeah, the we the people. We the people yeah. are standing up. Robert Hall so, leading the charge. You got more you wanted to add? No, I'm good. I'm not cutting you off, oh, but no, we are coming. celebrating Americana <laughs> right here in Golden Valley, Arizona. Great American, Great American pizza. pizza. All the way. And a sub or two. Yeah. Trent Loose on the loose. See you down the dusty trail. Coming soon on Beck News. I uh, don't think that he could be any more perfect for being yeah. in our family here because it, it's just dovetailing with everything that we believe and, yep. and talk about here too. But Trent on the loose, and you can, um, you'll get little tidbits uh, coming out here. You, the archives soon will be available. I would suggest what you do to watch for it is uh, keep watching Beck.News, our website. You can also watch our Facebook page on Beck, and they will give you updates and, and things like that maybe little vignettes and things of Trent on the Loose, so you can keep track of that, too. But I'm really looking forward to him joining our, yeah. our Beck family yeah, here, too. it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. All right, folks, we're going to come back. We've got a, another cabinet member for you. This one is frightening, frightening. <laughs> Hang with us. We'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to pull them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, we're back. It's No Apologies on Beck. 
Final segment. Segment five. Good job sticking with us. We're going to talk about another cabinet member of the Biden administration. This one is the Secretary of the Interior. Her name is Deb Holland. She's frightening. <laughs> there are two reasons she was chosen. Yep. Number one, identity politics. Female, native. Number two, she is so radical that choosing her placates the extremists like AOC. Yep. Those are the two reasons. Good job. Oh, good choices, good guys. Good job, Biden. Yeah, let's take a look at what, what she looks Fabulous. like here. Fabulous. Okay, so this, this is, is Deb, Deb Holland, Holland, Secretary of the Interior. And uh, she <laughs> is 60 years old. Her confirmation vote was 50 to, 51 to 40, and four Republicans voted for her, which I found very interesting. Yeah. So uh, she has very little... She doesn't have anything. Experience. She has nothing. I know. It's, no, it's, she has a bachelor's in English, yep. and then she uh, got through law school in, with Indian law. Right. Her, her degree is in Indian law. University uh, of, of New Mexico Law she School. She is not a member of the bar right. because she failed the bar three times, and she hasn't done anything else. She worked at a bakery. Yep. She hasn't done anything else. Yep, she was born um, in Arizona, Winslow, Arizona. Wow. That's interesting. There's it a is. song about that. There and, is. And uh, she also, I'm interestingly... I'm standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Arizona. Such a fine sight Eagle to song. see. Okay, so... It's a girl, my lord! <laughs> I knew he's in not going to stop. In a flatbed Ford! Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, she also, interestingly, yes. was a military brat. So she ended up attending 13 different public schools. Mm -hmm before graduating um, in Albuquerque in 1978. And that's, that, is, that is tough on a kid. Holy cow, that's, that's a lot a of it. A lot of kids have done that, though. So she's, but the big thing, do we say she was a, uh, in, the, in the House of Representatives? Yes. We haven't said that yet. Okay, well, that's the thing. That's the one thing that right. she has is she is a uh, recognizable and no, a known entity, right. a known quantity uh, by the Biden administration because she was elected uh, from the 2019 to 2021 um, um, legislative session. Now she ran for Congress because oh, she wanted she's an extremist. more Native American women in Congress and that she thought Congress should be 50% women. That's what she ran on um, because apparently uh, some sort of benchmark. I don't know. That just seems ridiculous to me. The thing that I read about her that made me the absolutely most concerned literally was the fact that she was um, she came to Congress in the 2018 midterms as a climate activist who had previously joined the protesters against the South Dakota Access, it says the South Dakota Access Pipeline Project. And to me, if you are going to be one of those people who came and tried to destroy our community, I'm out. <laughs> so she lost me on the pipeline protest stuff. But she, of course, that makes her AOC's best buddy because she's a huge proponent, of course, of the Green New Deal. Right. AOC called her a Green New Deal champion. Yikes. And this is, keep in mind, folks, this is Biden's pick for the Secretary of, of the, the Interior. Interior. Right. So this is natural resources. Right. This is a person who wants to see a complete end to fracking. Complete end to fracking. Yeah. Uh, she's also in favor of single-payer national health. She's a socialist. Uh, a ban on military uh, style assault weapons, right? So she's opposed to the Second Amendment. Um, and she definitely is in favor of the you know, immigration and, and, and having that. But the biggest thing, as the Secretary of the Interior, is her, her war on fossil fuels. Right. It's, this is the last person. Now, this is the first person you want. I get, it makes sense for Biden to pick her. He wants to see us uh, off of fossil fuels, no matter how detrimental to the economy, no matter how detrimental to the livelihoods of so many millions of Americans. Right. That's, that's what they see. That's what the far left sees. So she's a great pick for that. For America, horrible, absolutely yep. horrible pick. So the new policies that she is advocating are poised to wreck states dependent on energy production, including including her own state. Her own state. Of New Mexico. Of New Mexico. Um, she stands up to be their champion at the helm of Interior. Holland dodged questions about her personal opinions in her confirmation hearing, of course, and instead pivoted to reaffirming her commitment to Biden's agenda. So she managed to kind of skate through in a sneaky style, 
from what it sounds like, uh -huh. and just just not answering and just avoiding. So, but and she was very she's very big into the you know the anti police movement as right? well. Right. She she was uh, one of the key players uh, when Trump wanted to go in and help Oregon, help Portland out, right? Uh, help Seattle out. That she was one of them that wanted to put a stop to that um, and and didn't want any kind of involvement at all because of course. Uh, it was more important to let those communities burn uh, because it hurt it hurt Trump. I want to know: Had you seen anything about Deb Holland on the news previously? Have no. you, was she kind of under the radar for you too? Because I had not really heard much about the Secretary of the Interior, um, and I don't know whether she's a stealthy candidate in that way and and was just slipped in. Or I don't know. Well, partly that there are so many things that have been taking place. Mm -hmm. Uh, in DC, where we have things like HR1, we have all this other stuff going on, I think we're going to see her become very prominent because these types of policies are core to what's important to the far leftists. Right. And so they'll come up. She, right. I, I think she will be very prominent. I just don't know how well she's going to do with her complete lack of experience. Yeah, I, have, I am underwhelmed when I have read about this, this woman, unfortunately. Well, but if someone's going to be that harmful to to America, mm -hmm. I'm glad that it seems as though she will be an incompetent player. Right, right. Well, so any that, of the things least. that she advocates are going to be horrible for our country, so I'm not looking forward to hearing what she has to say on, on much of any of those. So we shall see. Deb Holland, Secretary of the Interior in the Biden administration. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, <laughs> folks, that's all we have for you tonight. Uh, we will see you with a uh, Best of tomorrow night, and after that, we'll be back with so much good stuff I know. next On week. On Monday, we're going to be talking about Freedom Fest, so join us then, too. See ya. I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.